All right, I'm quite excited. I've got Erin Early here. She's our age group director of our high school age girls, U16 through U19. Erin's um, one of my most favorite people in town. I think she's one of the kindest individuals, and she'll do anything for anyone, and she's pretty rad and badass. So um, welcome, Erin. Erin does a lot for our community. She is a PE teacher over at Soda Creek Elementary School. She also runs a little tot soccer camp program, um, and she's the high school girls coach and also is the age group director with our club. So welcome. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> so, um, Aaron, do you want? Let's just start off and um, give a little bit of background of like where you grew up and and why you got involved in soccer and kind of a little bit of your history in the game. Awesome. Um, so I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago and uh, in a town called Geneva. Um, so it's a standard suburb where my friends on uh, my club teams were from different high schools, et cetera. So I had um, multiple club teams that I played on, but I would say I uh, I started off playing just rec league soccer, you know, just doing every, dabbling in every sport I possibly could. Um, I would say, you know, even though I chose early on, I chose like in fifth grade to just devote myself only to soccer and one, I think that's just because that was one of the only passions I had, but two, I think I maybe was pushed or persuaded maybe too early in my career to pick one sport, um, but that was just kind of how it was back then. And uh, and so I don't have any regrets as far as choosing soccer and moving forward with soccer at an early age, but um, I started off with having practices pretty close by with the local club nearby, and then um, as I started to get more and more serious, I had more and more opportunities to have an option to travel a little bit further uh, for practices and for games. And um, I, I would say that I'm glad I tried all those different opportunities and possibilities because it ended up uh, it ended up forming the way the person that I am today because I figured out what I liked, what I didn't like, what I was willing to sacrifice, and what I wasn't. And um, I think that ha I pay a lot of that to my early club days and my opportunities that I had there. Um, and then I went on to college in Ho at Hope College in Holland, Michigan. It's about a three hour drive to, uh, to this Michigan school from where I live. So it's basically like a drive to Denver. Um, I had never really heard of the school before. It just kind of was something I stumbled across on the internet and Honestly, wasn't even sure if I wanted to play soccer at that time. I had a pretty uh, yucky high school experience that left a little sour taste in my mouth that made me really kind of discover if that was a path I wanted to pursue. And um, I'm really glad I did because that was a way for me to form my own social connections, figure out who I am, find people that are like-minded like myself, and I mean, you can't say anything better than having a team and teammates behind you when you're in college. It's just the best experience ever. So I would say that um, that probably re that definitely reignited my love for the game. And then when I met Hobie, I really <laughs> ignited my love for the game. So it's been a cool progression for that reason. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's. It's interesting because you had stated that you weren't a hundred percent sure that you um, really wanted to play college um, soccer, um, and it was kind of like a last-minute decision for you. And that, you know, with coaching um, some of these kids with throughout our program, I get asked that question a lot: of like, when did you kn first know that you wanted to play a college sport, and when did you start pursuing that? And um, so, really, I mean people are different, right? I mean, like some people know that if they're going to go to college, they're going to have to play, you know, like it's all about playing and others are like, Hey, I know what I want to do with my career and my life. And, you know, if I choose to play soccer, um, then that's just a bonus on top of everything else. So, uh, I mean, do you want to share why high school was such like what made that 
a bad um, experience for you or, or not? It's up yeah, to yeah, happy to. Um, cause I think it's, I think it's very valid and, um, for a lot of our players, hopefully not because they had a terrible high school experience because I think that would attribute to my poor coaching. But I uh, I would say that for me, my high school experience was kind of, you know, like by the time I was my a freshman and a sophomore, I was on that track of filling out uh, or, I mean, contacting coaches, even though they couldn't contact me, going to college showcase tournaments, putting myself out there. Um, seeing my older teammates go to these big schools that like University of Michigan and LSU and University of Wisconsin. So I had these grandiose ideas of where I could go because I was playing with these incredible teammates and um, that were going big places. And then um, we actually had a, it was, it started, I think my journey of this whole thing started in club and it was one of our our local clubs basically broke off and wanted to create a bigger club. And um, it's actually the Eclipse Soccer Club, the, which is a really big and successful soccer club in the, in Illinois right now. Um, and I, Mike Nessie's the, the head of that, that organization. He was my high school varsity coach. And so I, I just, I think the world of them, but, um, and that organization, but, when that decision was for me that I had to make, it was I had to travel an hour to practice and back. I was going to have further travel um, opportunities. And I was struggling internally with a lot of people coming up to me and being like, oh, you're the soccer player of the family. And that was the only thing they really talked to me about was soccer. And even though that that was a passion of mine, I had an internal battle of that's not who I am. It's what I do. And, um, and so because of that, I started to really wonder if, um, going that direction was really for me. And if I basically, the way I look at it now is that if I went with that club, I probably would have had um, more opportunities to play at a higher level. I don't know if I could have hung at the higher level, but at least just kind of where those teammates went and um, played. Those were bigger schools, D1s, D2s, and stuff like that. And so I chose in that club season to not go with that club, stick closer to home and more local. And um, I developed some awesome relationships with girls that um, either were new, I even rekindled relationships with girls in my high school that I hadn't been playing with in clubs. So it was, it was a positive experience, but a, I was playing at a lower level. And um, so I knew that perhaps my opportunities were a little bit more limited now because of that decision that I made. And so um, then I went into my high school years and I honestly can't remember if it was my junior or senior year, but I uh, heavily disliked my high school coach. He just um, he he just sweared at you and told you how terrible you were, called girls fat, like just terrible stuff. And so it just you just I kind of was just doing it to stick it out, not really because I liked it. And so by the time I was over and done with soccer for a club in high school you know, put your, like, like, I feel like this is, there's a lot of girls and guys in the soccer club that are struggling with that same thing. It's pulling on your heartstrings, you know, like you don't want to be done, but you don't, now you feel like maybe you lost your opportunities because now you're a senior and you don't know where you want to go and you haven't committed and you've lost your, you know, all these things are going through your head and same things are going through mine. And then I stumbled across a small D3 college and I was going to, have to go through the tryout process. I was going to have to go through that whole deal. They weren't going to give me any sort of um, scholarship money as far as like leadership stuff goes or anything like that of things that I did in high school. It was just something I had to just pursue on my own as an extracurricular. And um, the moment I, I would say like a week into tryouts, I knew I'd made the right decision because it, it felt good. You're out on the pitch, you're meeting new friends, you're pushing yourself to a new level. And 
I had this idea in my mind that D3 was going to be a lower level, and by no means is that true. Um, it's funny that so I just, it's funny you say that because, um, and I'm sure you get asked this question a lot too. Is I think a lot of our kids they they have in the back of their head that you know D1 we've got to go D1. That's where you know, and if if we can't make D1, then what's the point? And um, you know, the school that I ended up playing at was NAIA and then transitioned to division two. And, um, and I, I mean, I, I think it was probably the best way to go, uh, looking back to be honest, because you're, it's not just soccer, right? I mean, you have the opportunity to still compete and be involved in, uh, a, you know, in good programs that bring a good level of the, of soccer, but yet you saw that freedom and time to enjoy you know, the college experience. A hundred percent. It, you, you know, you, you probably know sooner than later, whether whatever decision you end up making, you know, with, with soccer or whatever sport, you can kind of feel it right away. Once you've kind of, whether you're missing it and you're seeing people do it or you're in it and you're thinking, this is perfect. This is giving me the proper balance. Um, especially with what I was going through internally. If I did a little bit more, I don't know if I would have stuck it out for four years. It might've been too much um, as a, an identity thing for me, but I agree. It's a hundred percent finding your balance in every school sports. Like they're just, I just can't sp speak any, any more highly of it than, than everybody does. It's just truly gives you the best experience. And I loved it because I like joined the, sailing team and I was I was helping out with different organizations and I was going to um, like missions trips and I was um you know still like involved with you know the Greek life even though I never really pledged but I was kind of involved with those with those organizations so it's just cool to still be involved with as many things as you could be involved in in college but yet still be an athlete and and compete at a higher level yeah totally cool I think it's cool to kind of do a little bit of reflection and, um, and without you really knowing this, I've, uh, I've, uh, I'm going to ask you a few questions and I've reached out to of a, a few of your past coaches and teammates to kind of, kind of do a, like, what would you think, um, your coaches would have said about, uh, you as a player and what it was like to coach you. And then I have their true response. So let's have you, Reflect first and answer the question. So now looking back, um, okay. you are a coach and um, and you're reflecting back on you as a player. What do you think your coaches thought about you? Um, did they think it was easy to coach you? Um, what did they, how did they see you as a player? Um, I would think I was a pretty easy person to coach. Uh, just knowing my personality hasn't really changed much as I've aged. Just, I get along with others. I, I don't really ask questions. So, you know, if my coach was tells me to do something, I will do it. And, um, same thing. I'll work my, my tail off for, for a teammate, but, um, I would say I'm definitely, I was never a flashy player. I was, I, I think I was a player that could have, or, and was probably easily overlooked often just because I didn't really have um, a ton of something that really made me stand out except for just my hard work and my drive and um, me just being easygoing. So, and I think because I was easygoing, maybe they didn't sometimes care if they played Aaron or not, or, um, cause I just didn't really complain, even though that really did hurt when sometimes I didn't play, but, uh, I don't know. I think that's probably what I would say is probably an easy person to coach, but, um, and, and if I were to coach me, like I would, I would appreciate players like I was as a player because it, you just want the per you just want them to work hard. You don't want them to you don't want to see what they're capable of and then not see that they're reaching, not reaching their potential each day. And I would say that that would be, that was something I, I strive to be because I had a lot of um, role models that I looked up to that, that uh, never, never let their level drop. But I was, if 
feisty on the field and I don't really think I as a coach I would have appreciated my character on the field I was not very nice <laughs> yeah but, so I think, that's, but I think that's part of the game right I mean totally totally so I think that's fine and um what position did you play um in high school I started as a forward and then I think I just kept getting slower and slower and so I kept getting it further <laughs> further further back on the field <laughs> so I ended up I think my senior year in high school I ended up being a, a a central midfielder throughout club I played center mid all the time um and then in high school I was mainly a center midfield or I'm sorry in college I was mainly a center midfielder as well we actually played four in the midfield um like a three, six, one. I'm sure it's, it would probably form into something else, but I was like that back part of the diamond uh -huh. the majority of the time. And then there was one, there was one year where um, we had, we had a player that got injured and she was our center back. So I did play center back for one year. Cool. Well, so your college coach pretty much described you just like you just described yourself. So Lee said that, um, not flash, flashy, but reliable, very hard worker, got the job done, consistent, um, dependable, and um, always felt like that you should have, um, you were deserving of awards, but just weren't noticed. And, um, you know, and as well that show up every day and get the job done. Um, but because there's nothing flashy about them, they're not that like, um, amazing goal scorer or, um, or the keeper who pulls out those big time saves, but you know, they're consistent and, um, they're the, I mean, like sitting here looking at how, um, Lee describes you is, um, is the type of player I think is one of the most important type of players you need on your team, right. That, you know, it's just going to walk out there and get the job done and you can, you can count on them, right. That they're going to put that tackle in, or they're gonna dig a little bit deeper for you and um, and go to the end and battle for you. Um, and you know, it's interesting, I wanted to ask you because I just read this article that says uh, how you've been described as a player. Those are the players who usually are the captains of the team because um, you know the, the flashy players are more so worried about themselves, right? And not about the whole um, team and the unit. So uh, did you find yourself being the, the captain of uh, a lot of your teams that you played for? Uh, no, really. I, I, uh, honestly, I think it's because, I mean, my actions maybe show that that's maybe more of a captainship type quality. I was incredibly quiet. Um, not saying that that's a bad thing, but I ended up because you need that quiet leader that leads by example. And I think that I was more of that um, person that maybe people saw as just a by example or a unnamed co-captain or something like that. I think my senior year, I was a captain um, at high, in high school, but I don't recall being a captain in college, um, but I do remember taking on whatever leadership role I felt comfortable taking on, I was, I did it, you know, whether it was calling out a junior or picking her up from a party because she wasn't supposed to be partying before, you know, a game, you know, I'm the one that was grabbing them. And so I remember things like that, that just, I think is a, are, are things that leaders do, but I was, uh, I don't really recall being a, a captain quite often on my teams. Huh, interesting. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, rolling into, so now we know what, how your college coach felt about you. What do you think some of your past teammates with, you know, club and um, high school and college, what would they say that you were like as a teammate? It's funny because you just kind of think, you as you're reflecting back, you just, uh, like, I have a certain vision about how I was as a player and as a player on the field I just I remember being the person that just got a ton of yellow cards and I think it goes back to me saying how I got slower and slower 
for all my years. <laughs> like they just blow by me. And so I just pull them down and be like, I don't care. I'm just going to get a yellow card because they're not going to beat me. They're just going to go down to the ground instead. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, and so that like in my mind is why I view myself as perhaps a quite a dirty player um, that I don't think I would have loved to a coach. And I would, I'd be curious if my teammates would recall that or not. Cause that, I, I wonder if that, I'm not sure if I'm explaining this well, but like as a coach now, that would be a big thing that would stand out to me. Like, Oh, I want that gritty person. I want that hard worker. I want that blue collar girl that just will not stop. But also I don't really need the dirtiness, which I think I, I brought more than I would have liked as, as a, as a reflection. Um, but I would say, and, and then I would just say kind of the same things that my, uh, my college coach said, which by the way, is, I don't even, I don't, that, that to me was better than any freaking award I could ever have gotten in my entire life. Just hearing that, um, just kind of, she wants to have more of me on, or, you know, people like me on her team. And, um, that's, that's a huge. And you're the type of compliment. player that she looks to recruit as well. So, Which, I mean, that's, that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. It kind of awesome. gives me shivers, you know, and I would hope that even though that's not necessarily how that's not, that's not the first thing that I think of when about me as a player, I go straight to like, I sucked, I was dirty and I got slow and I pulled people down. And that's probably just this a figment of just being a girl and unconfident in herself at that age. But um, I think I, I would hope that my teammates would think the same thing that just, I wasn't flashy, but I was fun. I was present. I didn't, I was not dramatic. I just was there to play and, um, and just, you know, but, but the relationships are, are, are what continue to last a, a lifetime. And some of my best friends were my former teammates, ones that stood in my wedding, et cetera. So. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I would say you're spot on again. Um, you know, Helen from high school and club says that you're the best teammate ever. Um, and uh, says you were a co-captain here that motivated others. <laughs> hey, there's my captain shit. There it is. There it is. And then um, you were, it sounds like you were quite a bit of a tackling beast. Huh? So like you So said, there goes my dirtiness. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> is either the ball or the player is going to get by it, but not both, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> And then, um, but you know, it's interesting here. So Holly, your college teammate, um, responded with calling you Rex. Okay. So, um, I want to get into why you have the name, nickname Rex. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, a former teammate or college teammate of mine, Rachel Ray, we called her, we were the same, um, she was my first friend on my soccer team. So I'm going to probably make this story longer than it really needs to be. But she was my first friend and really cool story. She was like the first person that like saw me like waiting in like some, like the dean's office for my first like college schedule or something like that. And I my parents had just dropped me off and I'm like crying and I'm like, this is awful. This is so, what am I going to do? I don't know anyone. And she sits right, right next to me and um talks to me and she's like hey uh this might not be <laughs> this might not be the right time but do you remember um do you remember state state semifinals <laughs> and I was like uh yeah and she's like yeah we beat you <laughs> and I, so immediately I just start like laughing and I'm like <laughs> hi, what's your name? And she's like, I remember, she's like, I was the creep that looked up the roster of people that were going to this college, saw that you were on the other team. And then when we beat you, I didn't go up and say hi then because you were pretty pissed. So <laughs> now I'm doing it while you're crying. So anyway, that started like our best friendship. And so we're out, we go out on the field later that day to do some sort of sprint or 
some sort of running exercise for tryouts and she she started bending over laughing like we barely knew each other and I was like what what's her deal and she's like <laughs> She's like, do you, has anybody ever noticed how she or pointed out how you run? And I was like, no. And she's like, most people, you know, like pump their arms. And she's like, you bust out some claws as you run. <laughs> and so she called me Rex and it stuck. And not, I think a lot of people in college, even to this day, don't even know that my real name is Aaron. It was Rex on the pitch and off the pitch throughout campus. That's where I got it from. <laughs> I think we need to start calling you Rex again. Do you miss, yeah. do you miss being called Rex? So no, are you quite happy that you're not getting called it anymore? <laughs> no, I honestly, like, I view it as a term of endearment. I love it. And um, I'll respond to it till the day I die, honestly. I think it just was, uh, yeah, it's a good it's a good name. Yeah, I, you know, it's interesting. I think a lot of us have those names that we used to go by all the time on the field, you know, when we were younger and then you become um, older like us. And no, we, a lot of people that we coach don't know these stories. And that's kind of part of um, us sharing our stories with our players is so they get to know us a little bit more, you know, and um, I think pulling out those nicknames with all of our, us coaches might be fun to do again. That would be a good one. That would be a good one. <laughs> But, um, but all of your teammates, they, they all say that you were always fun, energetic, um, always there for them on and off the field, always showed up to work hard. And, um, and more importantly, they, they remember you just um, being positive, always bringing energy, laughing, joy, um, and being a good teammate on and off the field, which, I mean... I, I look back and a lot of the memories that I've had on the field really are of those connections and friendships and, and not so much really related to the game. I mean, you do remember key moments here and there, but they're more about those connection pieces. And, and I feel like, you know, um, I feel like I know you pretty well, Aaron, and we, we, we kind of talk a lot about how it's important for us coaches to make those connections with our players. And we're really pushing that to, with our players to make those connections with everyone on the field as well, all of their teammates and not just people that they feel like they have one or two things in common with, but really take the time and energy to get to know all of, all of their team. I think it's, yeah, I guess I would just say that within Steamboat Soccer Club, like as coaches, there are so many coaches out there that um, understand how important the connections truly are, you know, through our, through us meeting and talking about our favorite coach, our least favorite coach, where it comes down to whether or not you made a connection, that coach made a connection with you or not. And um, it's always fun talking with you, Linda, about you know fun ways to connect with our teams because I think you and I see eye to eye a lot in that and how important just doing those silly little things are. Like as you were bringing up, I was just thinking of like, yeah, I I don't really remember a lot of my college games, but I remember before every game, I had a handshake with my left back. I had a handshake with my right back. I had a chest bump with my goalkeeper. I like, you know, that was just like a way to kind of get get the game going. And um, and again, that's just it's I think for all of us as humans, we thrive on connections and we just got to make it right for for us. And for me, it was being silly and doing handshakes or, you know, whatever it ends up being. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so you, you did say that you were forward at, um, in midfield for the majority of your playing career. Do you have like a favorite goal or? Yeah, actually. I, I mean, I think because I wasn't the flashy player or the goal scorer, when you, I, I had I had an opportunity in high school to score like the coolest goal ever. And I think it was so awesome because everyone was like, nobody would think Erin would be the one to score the winning goal. Like it is, that's just not her. You know, she's she's more of an assister. She combines. She doesn't really take risks and take shots. But we were in um we were in a state playoffs. I think it was the third place game because we had just lost later that day. I think we had to play two games in a day or something silly. But anyway, we were tied 1-1. One, one. 
or something like that too too and i had to mark like this beast of a girl and i was i mean much tinier than i am now and so i never it didn't really ever grow but i also was much you know i just i had nothing really on me but because i was aggressive and just kind of a pain in the you know what there my coach said you're going to be on her all all game and just take her out and so um i did that and um to the point where i think she came off the field and so then i kind of had a little bit more freedom with the ball i wasn't so much defensive and seconds were running down on the clock and i was 25 yards out by a sideline somebody threw the ball into me i turned looked at the game clock took a shot and it went into the upper 90 opposite corner and we won and i was like awesome. and so anyway it was like it's the coolest thing ever because that just would never really happen to a player like me that's just the cinderella story and i got to experience it and even the funnier part is uh one of the coaches at rob's camps comes from um he came from virginia but now he lives in in colorado now and we i don't know how we even got on the topic of my hometown but we did and he goes oh yeah i coached i coached this team and we lost to geneva in the finals this girl like turned and scored in the upper 90 minutes or seconds to go and i looked at him and pointed at him i was like that was me <laughs> and so we're sharing a pint over this so like i mean that that just is great i love that it so. goes to show you how much of a small world it is you know like we yeah. always tell our players right you don't know who's watching you and right so you should always be on your best behavior and things like that and so here's like a small world where somebody saw totally. a fabulous goal that you would have never thought in a million years right <laughs> Yeah, never thought in a million years I'd talk about it again. And then here I was, you know, just a few years ago, reminiscing about that goal with that guy. So that was pretty funny. I wish I would have seen it. It sounds like it must have been pretty special. <laughs> pretty well, magical, I mean, it's right? pretty special in my mind, but I'm sure it wasn't any, I mean, whatever. Hey, it, it was cool. Full cool moment, goal the goal. Yeah. So, so um, what would you say, what would you consider your greatest accomplishment? through life so far through my life mm -hmm. huh. without giving um a ton of thought to this because spoiler alert everyone Linda didn't tell me of any of these questions so uh I I wouldn't say it's something like incredibly uh tangible I would say for me um and my family and 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 my upbringing i am the only one that like you know left and went out of state is still here invested in my community um pursuing pursuing and having a career in things that i in things that i love like i love i love education i love soccer I have the best husband in the world. I just, I feel like I've, my biggest accomplishment is stepping outside of my comfort zone, going to a school where I knew nobody, and then did this, and then I did the same thing in Steamboat. I moved to Steamboat and I didn't know a, sing, a single soul. And it's, I've now just invested in my, in my choice. And, um, and I would call that a huge accomplishment because Steamboat is, an incredibly amazing community and I can't imagine myself ever leaving it and once you've invested into your community or into your organization or into your um, your area of work whatever it may be you you've given them a piece of you and so I feel like that's my biggest accomplishment is just following my heart and it started with stepping out of my comfort zone and leading me to where I am today which I wouldn't change for the world. Yeah, and um, I think our community is very lucky to have you, and I think your fabulous husband is very lucky to have you as well. So, um, and, you know, everything that you just stated in that accomplishment, though, was uh, before you were able to accomplish those things, the one term you kept saying was you put yourself out of your comfort zone. 
And, um, and I think that's key, right? Is, um, and I know we preach this a lot and I know the kids are probably sitting there rolling their eyes right now, but um, (laughs) we do preach this a lot, but I think when you sit down and you really get to know um, people like their greatest accomplishments do come from when they get out of their comfort zone. And um, do you have like a specific moment that or struggle that you can kind of describe a little bit? And it could be just with, with, with life in general or with the game. Um, I would say my, my biggest struggle in, in general, or maybe a downfall is, is feeling as though I, I uh, let my a teammate down, a family member down, um, or I ha- didn't live up to a standard that I had set for myself. And um, and so I would say that a specific example of this, I think it ate at me for years, um, which kind of goes back to our, when you brought up my college coach something really significant happened my senior year in college where I was suspended and I'm, we don't need to get into why, but basically I didn't follow a rule, even though I was 21 years of age, I had a sip of alcohol. Somehow it got reported to my coach. My coach sat me out. Um, and I had to go through this whole process and that process really made me, I felt like I let my coaches down because I felt like they had a, uh, a higher standard of me in their mind that I let down. I let my teammates down. I felt like I let my family down because I um, I do have like maybe a little bit of a perfectionism inside of me as well. So I think that that killed me inside. And so for years this tugged at me and yet here you are reaching out to my college coach and that doesn't even come across her mind 13 years later, right? She, she She's like, saying things that are incredibly awesome and and humbling and yet that struggle of that moment of feeling like I let someone down and it was a really big deal to me and I had a really hard time processing that and understanding that and whether to take ownership of it or fight it because I didn't believe in it um that was a I think that was a big internal struggle for me, but it ended up turning out in the long run that that's, that was a way for me to learn who I was and, and what pushes my buttons and why, and why I have high standards for myself and why maybe I have high standards for the people that I work with and people that I coach is because we're, we all want the best for everybody. And when we don't necessarily deliver that, I will dwell on that for a really long time. Um, but the hope is that I am able to dwell on it and come out of it on the positive side. So one question that, um, that I can't wait to hear your response about is because the 12, so the girls that are seniors right now, you started coaching them when they were in sixth grade, seventh grade. Yeah, I sixth or seventh um maybe even the end of their sixth grade year but yeah middle school for sure early middle school so um you've been with them a while yeah and um I just like I'd like to hear what your journey has been like with them um you know I think like we just had this conversation about connection right and you've been with them so long so you kind of like like a second mother to all of these girls. And um, you've seen them just when they just started their journey within the game. And now they're, um, they're, you know, they're graduating. And unfortunately with everything that's going on right now, weren't even able to have a high school season, but um, fortunate enough, they did have a club season with you in the fall. But um now, what has that journey been like with developing these uh, girls as soccer players and as as young women? Oh. Uh, I just, I have to take a moment for these seniors and just honor them and, and their 
maturity and and leadership in just the crappiest of situations truly like i just can't i just can't imagine what they're going through right now emotionally and um but i think how i'm seeing each and every senior right now respond to the situation speaks to the journey that they've been like they by no means did is their response right now um surprising me because they've been such strong positive silly girls since the moment i met them and they're still their their personalities their character nothing's changed they're only just better people right now and um that's in, that's incredible because I try to put myself in their situation right now and I I know I would be pissed. I'd be talking smack to my teammates and just needing to vent and let it out and I'm sure they're doing that cuz that's healthy. But the way they're the way they're holding themselves, the way they're communicating in front of their in front of their coaches and their underclassmen, you would have no idea that they may be going through such turmoil inside and internally. So their journey, my journey with them has been fun. It's been fun. And I, I think because that's one of the number one reasons why youth these days stay in a sport is because it's fun. And the moment it stops being fun um, is the moment where people start quitting. And um, I think these this group of seniors really, really knows how to balance fun and hard work you can you can goof around you can give them each other a hard time but when it's go time it's go time and they have been able to do that from the very beginning and i think that's because they've one i think they they did experience um success at a younger age than maybe um at like at that point maybe not a lot of teams were experiencing as much success as they were um so that is a special component that maybe isn't true to all teams but i think if you ask them they don't they probably don't remember how successful they were back when they were in sixth grade they don't remember how many games they won or lost they remember the the practices that we stopped when there was a double rainbow over emerald and just we just had to stop and take a jumping photo underneath that the rainbow they were they were a group that um were constantly curious in, in finding ways to just become better, whether it was seeking out and uh, trying the Real Cup for the first time, and they were absolutely terrified because they knew it was a high level tournament, to getting crushed in it and then winning it like maybe one or two years later. And now, um, and that same group, we kept proposing to them like, do you want to go to Arizona and play in a tournament? Do you want to go here and play in a tournament? And they, I just feel as though their their boundaries, their willingness to take risks, their willingness to just put themselves out there was, um, and and the buy-in was was huge. Like it, it wasn't just five or six girls; it was sixteen girls that were saying, "Yeah, let's go do this." And um, and I think that that is a tribute to just their mindset and their character and their passion for the for the game and for each other and um we just had a we just had a meeting with all the with the entire high school program yesterday because we had just this week announced that um or chasa just this week announced that we are no longer going to have a season um but as a program we weren't going to stop and hearing from each one of the seniors um some of them you know just looking out in the drizzly cold weather saying i would kill to be out on the field right now and playing a game and um that right there talks about their passion and then and their their willingness to say like just remember the time goes by fast and next time we have a chance to be out on the pitch together we don't we don't have time to mess around we have we need to just cherish the moment and um and I think this was this is a team, and this is a this is a group of seniors that really cherishes their moments, and they don't they don't forget about them. And 
um, man, there, I, I, it's just really, it's really special to see. We've been take, we've been given each senior has been given a team, a small team that they, and each, each week the team changes. So it's an opportunity for the high school seniors to reach out to the high school underclassmen and they have to do some physical challenges together, whether they work out and then they have to do a social challenge together. And the leadership that these seniors are taking, they could easily say, this is not for me. I don't have time for this. The season's over, I'm done. But again, it's not just, it's the whole group of seniors saying, they were saying on the, on the little virtual call yesterday, I'm going to win this challenge this week my team is going to win and I cannot wait to get out on the field and play, whether it's putting our high school uniforms on and we're playing a scrimmage or we get a chance to play against a, an opponent. But that's, that's them. That's, that's who they are. They're all in all together. Yeah. And you know, what's pretty impressive to me um, hearing you say all these things is that even it would be so much easier for them just to throw in the towel right now, but it's, um, it's about accountability and it's it's about more than um, just them, right? Like it's about the programs that they're involved in and knowing that like the way that they react is just making sure that everybody else who follows reacts the same way, right? So it, it, they're trying to build that culture and show what the culture of, of um, that team is and that they should be carrying it on once they leave. So they're, they're leaving a legacy to say, Hey, you know, there's always going to be distractions. Um, but it's the way that you deal with it that will, um, decide how you come out of it, you know, and it's awesome. And I think that says a lot about you because you've been with these girls, um, for that long. And, um, and I think it's just awesome to see that that relationship you guys have and and that respect you have for each other and that you're willing to battle through anything together. So that that's pretty cool and pretty special. Not many coaches get to feel that. So, yeah, thanks. I mean, I, I wouldn't really give myself hardly any of the credit. I really think that these these girls have been molded by, you know, like by your community, you know, and the fact that I've just been honored to be able to be a part of their lives for for so long I would always say like you're gonna get sick of me <laughs> and I'm sure they are but uh I just think you know their parents the the club the high school I mean just there's so many amazing people that rally behind these seniors and um I just I just hope we can find a way to to celebrate them and honor them in a way that's so special because they deserve it, but also they don't, they don't get a senior game. They don't, they're not getting an end of season banquet. They'll get something, but it's, it, they already know it's not going to be the same. So how do we make it spectacular for yeah. them? And that'll be a big challenge, but we're, we're willing to take it on. Yeah, definitely. All right. Yeah. Um, Rap, I'm going to throw some rapid fire questions at you. So they just oh short answers, okay? Okay, short answer, got it. All right, your favorite food? Pizza. Ooh, mine too. Favorite yeah. drink? Favorite drink? Uh, coffee. Oh, that, so that goes into the next question, coffee or tea, but you're saying coffee? Coffee, <laughs> yep. Um, light beer or IPA? IPA. Mountain or beach? Mountain. <laughs> Hike or bike? Bike. <laughs> oh, I wish, I wish I was on my bike right now. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Favorite color? Purple. Really? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what makes you the happiest? Hobie and my dog. <laughs> um, if you could be anything in life, what would you be? Ooh. Um, ooh. Um, I like, I like everything I'm doing. Um, I don't know, maybe, uh, 
maybe like a professional traveler of some sort. I don't know what that looks like. It's some way to travel everywhere <laughs> and get awesome. paid for it. <laughs> there you go. Well, so Aaron, we did reach out to a few of the um, your current players that you've coached and asked them what you were like as a coach. So uh, what would you say that your some of your current players would say about you as a coach? Well, I think we've really hammered down how important you and I feel um, connections are. So I would hope that they see that that is uh, something I value, that I value having a, a connection, a, a coach-player relationship with, with everybody. Um, I would say that I kind of have morphed over the years as far as kind of coming off as just being a player and being like, my way or the highway and like this is you know just kind of not really having a uh giving any giving the girls a little bit of an inch and giving and then like letting them go a mile i would say um i've over the years it's changed into me really focusing first and foremost on the relationships um i try so hard to demand their best it drives me nuts when it, they're not practicing at their best, but I don't, I still don't as a coach feel as though I've found a way to really like ignite that fire or hold them to a high standard when it's not good enough. Um, I think that's just my own personal coaching journey that, that that is still something I'm trying to figure out of how best to communicate that in my own way. Um, but, yeah, I would say hopefully they say relationships and high standards, hopefully like with my teammates saying that, that, that I was motivated and en energetic and, and fun. Hopefully they see that side of me as well. Um, but uh, I don't know what they say. Okay, so um, we reached out to a few of your players and their feedback was, Erin always coaches to one's ability and never treats anyone on the team different. She can read every player and holds each one accountable. She builds a relationship with players on and off the field and sees her players as more than just players, but as people. Sometimes Aaron's can, Aaron can be too nice when both the player and her know, know what needs to happen. However, Aaron does an excellent job at holding the players accountable after the fact. <laughs> you think you're too nice? I think that makes a ton of sense. Like I, I, I think that was that's a, a way of a player communicating my own internal battle of a coach. Like when it's not good enough, I need to stop them and pull that individual aside or pull the whole group in, whatever it is, and just saying this isn't good enough. But that is, I, I haven't done that. I don't know if it's because I'm afraid. I don't want to hurt their feelings. I'm too nice. Like I think that that's where the too nice thing comes in because. I think that is a a component of my my weakness. I am I am the nice cop usually, but um, I think some of them have seen my uglier sides from time to time. I just think it needs to be. I think I do need to have that that moment of saying this isn't good enough because I think players, believe it or not, respond better to something specific like that, especially after you've already developed the relationship where they know that you care. And then you can say it's not good enough um, because then I feel like then they know it's real. They know it's genuine and hopefully they will work to bring out the best versions of themselves, you know? Yeah. And, you know, and sometimes though, I think it's uh, depending on the player, right? I mean, some players want you to be raw and real, even if it's going to hurt their feelings. Right. And, um, and, but other players sometimes don't want that honest raw feedback, right? So it's it's that connection piece we're going back to again is really knowing those players and who you can really be raw and real and honest with and who really can't handle it and finding it a way to get your point across, right? Totally. And I have a pretty good feeling I could probably name a five like I don't know, three or four girls that that could person could be. Um as far as that person probably appreciating the call me out during it instead of after the fact and having like that conversation being like, that wasn't your best today. I think that I can come up with a few girls that would appreciate it in the moment. But I, like you said, could come up with a few girls in your head that 
that that would be detrimental to the rest of their training practice. Yeah. So <laughs> completely. So they yeah. also said Erin pushes her team to be the best on and off the field. She inspires players. Um, Erin is not like any other coach. She's so much more. She pushes you, teaches you, holds you accountable, relates to you. And with each player, she finds a way to support them where and when they need support. Erin, I really appreciate you taking time out of your uh, day to chat with me. And um, and I, I think it's important for, I, I think when we get down on the field and we're all about just getting, going through the process and our players really don't have the time to kind of get to know us coaches. And I think it's kind of good to give them the opportunity to get to get to know us. So thank you so much. And thank you for everything you do for our community. Thanks so much, Linda. It was awesome to be here. And thanks for doing this. I think it'll be really cool to hear about, hear what the rest of the coaches have to say in our club and get to know everybody a little bit more.